Stephanie Grisham spent years at Donald Trump's side. She was former President Trump's press secretary and then chief of staff for First Lady Melania Trump before quitting her job in protest after the January 6th insurrection. Now, please remember that Stephanie Grisham never held a press briefing as press secretary. But now she's ready to talk in a new tell-all memoir, which details her time inside the Trump White House. In one passage, Grisham recalls how Trump catered to Vladimir Putin during their 2018 meeting, telling the Russian leader, quote, OK, I'm going to act a little tougher with you for a few minutes, but it's for the cameras. After they leave, we'll talk. You understand? Joining us now to discuss our CNN political commentators, Anna Navarro and Natasha Alford. Uh, well, that's not a surprise, um, Anna, that when we've talked about this, you and I, often, that he was so deferential to Vladimir Putin. I mean, President Trump was a super fan of Vladimir Putin's, but now that we know that whatever bluster he claimed that he was so tough on Vladimir Putin, beforehand he had whispered to Vladimir Putin, just, I'm faking it right now. You know, I, I kind of feel like there's not much in this book that we didn't know about. It's just that it's reminding us of all the dysfunction that we already knew about and that we saw in front of us. I am troubled by the book, the nature of the book in general. Why is that? And all of these people who all of a sudden uh, resigned and protest on January 6th after she witnessed all of these things, after she witnessed him kowtowing to Putin, then she decides to pro uh, resign and protest on January 6th. It's a little late. And I, I find the title of the book, frankly, incredibly cynical. It says, I'll take your questions now. After she didn't take any questions during the entire time that she was press secretary. Yeah. So it is, it is cynical, and it is, uh, I think, emphasizing the fact that she didn't take questions as a press secretary. And, okay, now that, that you're going to buy my book and you're going to pay me, now maybe I will answer your questions and spill all the tea. Well, girlfriend, it's a day late and a dollar short. I'm glad you point that out, that we could have used some of this information while he was president. And that does raise the question, Natasha, of why so few people in Melania Trump's inner circle, people who she once considered close friends and considered her close friends, have no loyalty to her. I mean, afterwards, they are willing to discuss everything they saw. And I don't know why that is, why she inspires such lack of loyalty in the people around her. Well, I mean, if you think about some of the passages we saw in the book, she frankly wasn't that inspiring. <laughs> uh, she was portrayed as, you know, a first lady who was quite self-centered, um, who was pretty petty, you know, who took jabs at, at both the media and her husband um, due to, you know, rumors of his infidelities. And, uh, you know, just in general, did not have the attitude of service that you would expect from a first lady. But I agree with Anna. There's just so much hypocrisy uh, with folks like Stephanie Grisham, who once blasted the media, right? Attacked the media as being biased, uh, said that reporters were using press briefings with Donald Trump to get book deals, and now look who has a book deal, <laughs> right? So this is, this is not about courage, this is very much about convenience. There's still some juicy stuff in there, so here's one. There um, is. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, not that's going to stop me from telling you. I hate the book. I hate the cynicism, but give me the tea. But here we go. Because <laughs> this yes. is about the Stormy yes. Daniels stuff, okay? So she had a front row seat on everything that was going on behind the scenes when the Stormy Daniels stuff broke. And so here's what she writes. After the Stormy Daniels story broke and all of the allegations that followed from other women, I felt Mrs. Trump was basically unleashed. She had always been independent from her husband, but now as a wronged and publicly humiliated first lady, she seemed liberated to do whatever she wanted or didn't want to do. But Anna, as we all remember, one of the things that she wanted to do was wear a jacket that said, I don't really care do you when she went to to meet with children mm -hmm. unaccompanied minors at the border so this was this was her big expression of her inner thoughts here there were a lot of uh, expressions of her inner thought there were times when she didn't go with him to certain events there were times when she slapped away his hand I mean we all remember that that dysfunction in telenovela <laughs> we thought we thought Bill and Hillary gave us something to talk about you know this was also a uh, pretty you saw a dysfunctional marriage on display the presidency is a fishbowl and all of those things are exacerbated and they're being covered 24 hours a day and so i i don't think she uh, made many efforts melania in hiding her anger and displeasure and speaking of um president trump's behavior around other women here's an interesting nugget that we hadn't heard before there was apparently this young attractive press aide and president trump 
acted so lecherously around this person, according to Stephanie Grisham. Here's what she writes. Grisham alleges that Trump became obsessed with a young female press aide who was not named in the book. The president constantly asked where the aide was during press events, Grisham wrote, and allegedly once requested that she be brought to his cabin on Air Force One so he could look at her butt, basically. I mean, not surprising, but this is the kind of thing that you would expect from, you know, a middle school boy, not the president of the United States. Natasha. Yeah, no, nothing surprising about it, right? And and yet his his followers, uh, they they would elect him no matter what, right? We saw, you know, grabbing women uh, by their private parts. He he mocked uh, rape accusers at, by saying that they weren't attractive enough to be assaulted. I mean. There is nothing here that is surprising. But you know what I think is really uh, some interesting tea is the way that Melania Trump responded to Stephanie Grisham's accusations. Both both of the Trumps kind of took this misogynistic uh, a stance towards her and essentially said, well, you know, she's had failed relationships. She was bitter from a breakup. And so Melania Trump very much falling in line uh, with misogyny uh, when she needs to, and falling in line with her, uh, falling in line with her husband's political agenda. At the end of the day, she didn't stand I have up that. for anything. Yeah, yeah she I had, but she, they had her around for years, right? This is not a uh, as Trump usually does. So who is that? I don't even know them. This is a coffee boy or a coffee girl. She was around in one capacity or another in Trump world, Trump political world. For years, and look, I, I don't even think it's you know Trump acting as a uh, high school boy. I think it's Trump acting as Donald Trump. That 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 vignette you just talked about harkens back to uh, to when he to Miss Universe, where he'd walk into the dressing room to see all of the uh, women getting dressed. It harkens back to uh, him rating women, giving them a rank. Oh, she's a ten, she's an eight, she's a six. It's you know so it's very typical of Donald Trump. And again. It just goes back to remind us what a what a horrible, disgusting, lecherous man was elected president of the United States. Um, I do feel the need to read his statement on her book, which is too bad that sleazebag publishers continue to report this very boring garbage. We and the MAGA movement are totally used to it, and someday in the not too distant future, we will have our voice back and be treated fairly by the press. That's the statement by Donald Trump. Um, about that, j just one last thing before we move on, about the rape accusation from E. Jean Carroll, Stephanie Grisham also writes about that, and what she says is that he told her, Donald Trump told her, just deny it. Not he didn't do it. He looked at her in the face and said, just deny it. Mm. That was his strategy. Um, uh, Anna, before I let you go, I just want to ask you about what happened at The View. Uh, you got a false positive, right? You're not, you had no COVID. You were not infected by COVID. You feel great. Alice, if I, I, I have had literally seven tests since that false positive on Friday. I mean, right now I feel like I am the most tested human in America. My nostrils are raw, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and I'm good. We're good. So f today I'm, I can sit here telling you I'm uh, I'm negative. It was it was a you know it was a fluke. It was a mistake. It was it was awkward. It was embarrassing. Uh, I think we f I feel terrible with the vice president's office, and 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 they were great. The vice president's office really you know, rolled with the punches, st stuck around, tried to uh, make it work. Uh, it looked like it. I mean, we saw her in that little, like, satellite office with her earphones in. Uh, since then, her office has said that they felt a little duped by the, vo by the view because they had been assured that you had tested negative. Do you know anything about that, if they'd been told that? I have no idea. Uh, I do know that we test, we got tested. I do know that the White House did request that we get tested 24 hours out from uh, the interview, and that did happen. We got tested right after the show on Thursday. Um, I, uh, after that, you know, all I do is lend my voice and lend my nostrils. I don't <laughs> know what happened uh, with the test results, and I wasn't the point of contact with the White House. And, and look, if they are angry, frankly, I, you know, I think, and they're, you know, they're vexed, uh, I think they are, they have every right to be, and I, and I know that people at The View, uh, including myself, feel bad because I think this was an important interview for the vice president. It was an important interview for us, and we had worked very hard uh, to put it on the air, to ask tough questions, relevant questions, and, um, and I hope that, uh, that, that we get the chance. It was an important uh, interview for our audience to see the first female vice president uh, give her first interview, and 
and really it just you know I it was I'm, also unfortunate I, I, I hear yeah, you I'm, I totally I'm, understand I'm so like bummed about about the entire thing I get it on behalf of your nostrils we thank you for lending your voice here and being on with us and Natasha Alford thank you as well